Hey, I'm McDermott. I'm the director of choral activities here at Longwood, and we are thrilled to bring you uh, tonight's concert, Lift Every Voice. For the most part, uh, this, the words that you will be hearing throughout the concert were written by the students who are speaking them. Um, at this time, I would like to request that you turn off your electronic devices. The concert is being recorded, and a link will be made available to those who want to see uh, a video and hear afterward. Um, but for now, I invite you to turn off your devices and enjoy Lift Every Voice. Growing up, children see themselves as main characters of their own story. They are the protagonists. From a young age, we are programmed to think mainly of ourselves. When people grow up and realize how everyone has their own story, they see that someone's story may be so shockingly different from their own. Their view of the world may even become altered. As the song says, you've got to open your heart, the most tender part. You'll find yourself alone until you start, until you start to let that story in. Everyone has room to speak about what is causing them pain, anger, or sadness, no matter what their skin color, age, or gender is. It is all important no matter what, because everyone's story is important. Being ignored while trying to speak up for yourself, or even another, does not feel great at all. You have to open up and speak about your story and other stories so that you find that you are not alone. Oh, 
You may not be aware that's not Morgan Jones. That was Noah Carter. Morgan had a death in the family and is unable to be with us tonight. We're grateful to Noah for filling in at the last minute. Um, also, yes, no. I also just want to take a minute to acknowledge Norman Hurt and Tamia McBrayer, the students that you'll see con conduct tonight. They have been uh, working with these classes all semester starting with warm-ups at the beginning of the year, helping to choose music, and then culminating in the final performance. And this leadership and helping others to lift their voices. Um, I'm very proud of the work that they've been doing.
been a part of my life. From when I was a little kid in Philippines, playing in the streets with my friends, with the music playing from someone's house, 
to when I moved to the United States and seeing my father play instruments and sing with my family during car rides. The line, hope will sing and hope remains when others fade away, really speaks to me. Music has always been there, when I'm in trouble and when I am the happiest. Whenever I feel sad or I'm unsure about how my life is going, I can always listen to music or make up something on my instrument and I instantly feel better because it serves as an outlet for my emotions. Music helps people out of hard, rough places. Music can connect us and instantly lift us out of whatever funk we're in. Hope is the breath of music says that music has the power to lift us out of dark places, take us to a place that is happy, light, and hopeful.
Good evening. I find this next song, Sonio di Valari, meaningful because of the subject matter. Leonardo da Vinci designed flying machines, which he called ornithopters, and they were supposed to achieve flight by the pilot flapping wings on it. Now, he never actually got around to building it. We all know that flapping wings just doesn't work for humans. However, I believe that if we gave Leo just a little bit more time, he would have achieved his goal and would have been the very first human to fly. What I also find fascinating is that he wrote this passage, the lyrics you are about to hear in his notebook, and they gleam of an optimism, a 100% certainty, that mankind would fulfill this dream of his. It may have taken us quite a while to get there, but we did, and I think you'd be proud.
Seek Maria is empowering to females, its origin story being God coming to Mary and telling her she is to have baby Jesus. Whether you're religious or not, it is an inspiring story. Mary was only about 12 to 14 and had the scary but empowering obligation to deliver the Savior of the world. Every time I sing it, I channel that female energy and am amazed by what we can do with our bodies and our minds. When we sing, I picture a fountain or waterfall, ebbing and streaming with grace and power. Sing Me to Heaven goes far beyond the pages of music. It so eloquently represents the pleading we all feel to be comforted. We want to be loved and remembered, and this piece accomplishes this through its lyrics and music. Touch me, grief and comfort, love and passion, pain and pleasure. This song lifts the voices of the weak and the hurting and brings their plea for comfort to anyone who will listen.
piece, the words repeatedly ask about why a person might be feeling down, and then later offering advice and words of encouragement. Sometimes, the best way to lift up the people you care about is to stand by them and remind them that they are not alone and that they have a voice. Women are expected to live up to a variety of unrealistic expectations, and that can make life miserable for anyone. Having the government, men, and even other women scrutinizing any action a woman makes has the power to wipe the smile off her face. Decisions are being made every day about what women should look and act like and what they can do with their bodies. What's keeping you sends a message that says no matter what is happening, keep dancing, keep singing, and keep displaying the best parts of yourself.
The spirit is uncaged, releases a feeling of joy and happiness that overtakes you when we sing. The composer intended for this piece to have a buoyant energy and to celebrate. We are living in a time where our world is spreading negativity instead of sharing joy and celebrating life with each other. I love that this piece starts with the word jubilant. We all have challenges and difficulties that seem sometimes unbearable, but when we have joy in our hearts, we can persevere. Jubilant, 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 jubilant. 
father grew up on a small farm owned by a white family near the reservation. His family, including his three brothers and sister, were allowed to live in a two-room house as long as they worked on the farm. Another sister he had died from pneumonia because a doctor refused to come to the reservation to heal her. Um, when I sing Cherokee Traveler, I think about the racism that is still shown towards indigenous people in the United States. Many tribes are not federally recognized, meaning the United States decided the tribe no longer exists or that they do not meet the criteria of nation status. My tribe is one of the many non-acknowledged tribes on the East Coast. Most people from my tribe no longer live on the reservation. They were able to leave and make a better life for themselves. I am thankful I did not have to go through the racism and hardships that my grandfather did. I hope that one day our government acknowledges the tribes who are fighting to be heard. The first song we sing before that is Minia Minayo. Um, the text is supposed to be foreign or nonsensical, and then we sing Cherokee Travel. <coughs> Mama, 
as human beings, it is easy to let our emotions overtake our rational thoughts, making us give in to the hatred that has been thrust against us. The world will be a much better place, and we will be much happier individuals if each of us let go of the animosity we hold for each other. Last year, there was an incident at Longwood that sparked a conversation about campus safety. At a protest to raise student concern, I stood in front and spoke directly with university officials. The interesting thing that happened after, when I and other multicultural organization presidents had a meeting with Dr. Tim Peterson and President Lee. The result of these meetings not only added security to Longwood Village, but also got a place for multicultural groups on campus. At the conclusion of this meeting, President Reedley promised us that we would get together at least three times per school year from now on. I have since had two other meetings with the President and this yet-to-be-named student team, and there are two more meetings scheduled for the spring semester. I feel honored to be a part of this student coalition and so fortunate that Longwood really does have a caring, open, and willing administration team. I feel very fortunate to be at Longwood because I feel I have been afforded many opportunities to use my voice or listen to someone else's. The forefront example is my Citizen 110 class with Dr. Bidwell. The name of this section is Be a Changemaker. It has allowed us to step inside someone else's shoes and raise awareness for people who are affected by poverty and addiction. Dr. Bidwell has allowed us to speak through specific dilemmas and has taught us how to be empowered individuals to use our voices to speak out and be heard. Dr. Bidwell. <laughs> Recently, in one of my psychology classes, I shared a very sensitive part of my story. This was not the easiest for me. In this instance, I was hoping my story would resonate with someone somehow. Shortly after, a classmate shared a similar story. As the class discussion went on, others shared their antidotes. I believe it is important that we all share our stories, even the dark and scary to tell parts of our stories. It opens doors that encourage others to speak up. It provides perspective. It may help us to help others by being a path of empathy and compassion. Before coming to college, it was very hard for me to find my voice. I would let people walk all over me for the sake of keeping the peace. Now I have learned how to speak up for myself. <coughs> Never again will I let myself be run over by other people. I will continue to use my voice not only for myself, but for others as well.